Welcome okay. to the paint tour. We're traveling the province of BC all summer long, spreading breast health awareness to women and to men of all ages. So the first segment of our bus here is extremely important because it educates us all on how to be breast aware which entails where your breast tissue is, the red flags to be looking for, and when to be doing your checks. So this, what we have here is a little summary of the wall, but we're gonna go over it together. So breast tissue starts just below your collarbone, goes over to your sternum, goes underneath the breast, and right up into your armpit. So it's quite a large area that you need to be checking for all of these red flags. So any sort of skin changes, redness or lumps, any dimpling or thickening of the skin, nipple changes and discharge, changes in the size or shape of your breasts, and unusual pain or swelling. Now these last ones here are pretty common um, effects of when uh, ladies get their periods or menstruate. So our suggestion is to try to do your checks at the same time every month, preferably about a week to two after you're done. And if you're no longer menstruating, then just keep it consistent and do your checks at the same time every month. So this little table here is uh, full of little giveaways or pink ribbons, nail files, some recipe cards, and some information on ovarian cancer as well. We'd like to move forward and take you on to this little trivia game that we have, which is great because um, it's true or false, and it answers a lot of common questions and misconceptions that people have regarding breast health and breast cancer. First question, I can lower my risk for breast cancer by maintaining a healthy body weight. The answer is true. Maintaining a healthy body weight can reduce your risk for risk for breast cancer and is particularly important for postmenopausal women because unfortunately with age, um, you do become more high risk. Breastfeeding can lower my risk for breast cancer. And the answer is true. The longer you breastfeed your baby, the better, and is just good for your overall breast health. Having a mammogram will expose me to too much radiation. False. The radiation dose of a mammogram has a one in a million chance of causing breast cancer, and this is outweighed by the fact that a mammography can reduce your risk of dying from breast cancer by 40%. They say that it's the equivalent amount of radiation as if you were to go on an overseas flight and return. Having a mammogram can be mildly uncomfortable. The answer is true. Some women do experience some discomfort, and it really does depend on you as an individual, your body type, your pain threshold, just you individually. So they do make a suggestion to lessen the discomfort, which is to schedule the mammogram during the first two weeks after your period, try to avoid coffee the week before, and take a Tylenol one hour before the mammogram, and that will help to alleviate some of the discomfort. Underarm deodorants cause breast cancer. The answer is false. Your risk for breast cancer does not increase if you use an antiperspirant or deodorant. So this and breast cancer are not linked. However, if you prefer to use natural products, then please do. Vitamin D helps reduce the risk for breast cancer. This answer is possible. So there is evidence that vitamin D may reduce the risk of some types of cancer. Um, we just really encourage that everybody keeps their D levels up by taking some sort of a vitamin or a supplement, um, especially in the fall and winter months when we're not always getting it naturally from our environment. Getting breast cancer is beyond my control. False. There is evidence that leading a healthy lifestyle can significantly reduce your risk. So things such as getting active, limiting your alcohol, and eating well. So everything in moderation and being aware of what you're putting into your body and the effects that it has. Not smoking and taking care of yourself. Checking your breasts regularly at the same time every month. And if you are between the ages of 40 and 79 that you're going for your mammograms. Currently right now, only 51% of women in BC who are eligible for one are going for one. So what we've done is we've taken the next step and created a website called thepinktour.com. On our website, there's a link that says book a mammogram. It takes you directly to the screening mammography program of BC website, asks you five quick and easy questions, and after that's submitted in three to five business days, someone will contact you from SMP um, with a convenient appointment time and at a location closest to you. However, even with no risk factors, there still is a chance that you will develop the disease. So none of us are in the all clear. True or false, I don't have to worry because I don't have a family history of breast cancer. And the answer is false. More than 90% of breast cancers that are diagnosed are diagnosed in women who do not have a family history of the disease. And 1% of breast cancers that are diagnosed are diagnosed in men. So men can get breast cancer as well. So that's what we're doing at the Pink Tour. We're not only educating everyone on breast health and how to be breast aware, but we're also offering the opportunity um, for women, women between the ages of 40 and 79 to book their mammograms. We have a little loop of 
just people aff um, affiliated with the foundation and a little bit of bit about what we're doing. And at the back of the bus here is where we can actually book in the uh, mammogram appointment. So there you are. And then, well, so that's it for the pink tour. Thank <laughs> Hope you, you enjoyed your tour.